well there's several formats but I mean there's two individual formats which is the plus and the and the dash and some of the players in the beginning would only play plus and some would not play the others well I got some of them still but then the newer ones play everything including mp3 and uh, even your digital pictures but there's another thing that I found over the years as I work with them DVDs it's not just the players it's the DVDs themselves uh, some DVDs won't work on some recorders and uh, I look I noticed that in my manual I sent one DVD recorder I got back because it messed up four DVDs I sent it back so it didn't work well I bought another one here I don't know a year after that or so and uh, I was happened to be reading the manual there and it said uh, the only DVDs that would be guaranteed to be compatible would be in it named about four brands and some of them data and different brands they wouldn't work they didn't guarantee them to work and they didn't work I tried one or two of them just to see and sure enough they didn't work and if you use the ones that they asked you to use they work fine so I've not had any problems since I know which DVDs to get like uh, I've, me and uh, Jim has a couple of Philips uh, recorders with hard drives and when I get the uh, DVDs I get the printable Philips DVDs and I know I won't have any problem but there's two or three other brands you can use also but if you don't know offhand which ones they are or have a list somewhere close you can put them in and they'll record but uh, they'll they won't finalize or something at the end and they're just they just mess up at the DVD and you have to throw it away and start over of course they was pretty expensive back when I first started with them here about six years ago or so but now they're down really cheap you can throw one away if you need to talking about your heart there and uh, yours is uh, 50 percent out of 55 and uh, I told my wife I asked her if she ever had that kind of a test run over she said she had not never had one like that run on her but they uh, they uh, check a couple of other things on her to you know see how her heart's doing and she also has glaucoma and they have to keep the pressure down in her eyes to around 17 or so and uh, she has to take uh, drops three times a day three different kind of drops and uh, some of them are really expensive two or three hundred dollars for 30 drops and uh, they call them liquid gold and they are but of course that's what she needs to be using to keep from going blind and uh, but she's been doing pretty good with her heart they give her a brand new pill she was having problems like almost what you call maybe a mini heart attack back earlier this last fall when the doctor found out he didn't like her getting numb all over like tingling and chest pains so he put her on another pill he first gave her nitro to put under her tongue you know if she had one of those spells and I give her some of them two or three times over two or three days and then uh, this new pill that she got kicked in and uh, she takes one in the morning and one in the evening and it seems to keep everything straight we've not given her any nitro since she's been taking them and the thing of it is she gets uh, 30 of them I believe or maybe it's uh, 90 of them uh, for four dollars so they're, they're dirt cheap and she calls it her miracle pill because it's really helped a lot I'm not sure what it does I guess it opens up the uh, veins and uh, lets the blood circulate better to keep her from having them spells like that because I guess it's restrictions what caused it in the first place but anyway she calls it her little miracle pill and it, it's been working really good so far we're thankful for that well I guess I have just about commented on yours there uh, uh, Sid, uh, yeah, I like your nice cruises, and you was talking about, uh, you know, you got one more scheduled. Well, you did. I guess that's gone now, but because it's all ready after the first of the year, it's, it's uh, 2010 now. 
I don't know if you've got any of them booked or not, but uh, maybe it's time to take a break if you don't have any more and just sit back and play with your video equipment. We're snowed in here in Cincinnati, been snowed in for about a month. Snow was on the ground a few days before Christmas and it's never left and they added, you know, six or eight inches on top of that and today it's supposed, it's 31 right now, but it's supposed to go above the freezing part and we've had more days this year below freezing in a row than we've had in many years. But we hope that uh, tomorrow it's going to be close to 40 and that'll be you know like uh, 80 to you down in Florida. We'll be out just a whippy to cutting when it gets up to 40. Well till next time uh, Sid keep up the good work and I'll talk to you later. Well hello John good to see you back on the round robin with some video and I'll have to try a little later and see if I can get your uh, other one to play. I got the uh, comment uh, video to play. It worked fine. Just commenting there on uh, how much people made per hour back a long time ago. Dollar an hour and I think you said a dollar twenty-eight you started and I started $1.27 at Keebler in 1953, worked it up to $12.50 when I retired 27 years ago, and now it's $24.50, almost double. And, uh, but way back there in 1940, 41, in 1941 I was working on a farm hoeing corn for five cents an hour. I worked a hundred hours, got five dollars. Went to town on Saturday and spent all of it. Bought me a Big Ben watch for a dollar ninety-eight. My dad won for a dollar ninety-eight. Bought me a harmonica for fifty cents and spent the rest of it on pop and candy and stuff. Worked all that long time for and spent it so quick. That was hard come and easy go instead of the other way around. And back then, I remember my mom and dad. Uh, saying that you know coffee was 45 cents a pound and uh, because of the wartime you know and uh, they come out with post them how many of you guys remember post them i don't guess they make it anymore i was just kidding my wife the other day and asked her i said wonder if they make any post them i said that had a unique taste of course it didn't take the place of coffee but it did have a unique taste i guess most of you guys remember post them and we was talking about uh, your comments on the RC planes. Uh, yeah, I've been doing that for a long time. I started uh, with them airplanes back in uh, 1963 uh, with a control line, and in 1970 went to radio control. But my wife got me my first helicopter in 1956. It was a kind that had a cable on it similar to the uh, choke cable on a garden tractor or something like that. And it had a crank on the end of it. And it was about a five foot cable, I guess. had a crank on the end of it that would turn the rotors on the uh, helicopter. And you crank that just fast enough and up it would go, you know. And actually with that cable on it, with that steel wire around the cable, you could just turn the handle uh, right or left to make it climb or go down and then you just crank it to keep it up that was really my first experience with anything like that and then in 1963 we got into uh, cable airplanes and then when radios come out we got into that in 70 and we just kept climbing the same way with video I started out you know making uh, movies and titles and all that kind of stuff and uh, 1956 uh, when I got my uh, first uh, eight millimeter camera and I had to make titles and make them fly on and off and the way I would do that is I'd cut the titles out of cardboard and paint them with the uh, watercolors and lay the letters out on a, another piece of card white cardboard and film it with my camera then I'd take a fan and blow them letters all off then I would uh, turn that film over and reverse it and uh, splice it into the film when I got back and that would make the stuff fly off 
when it was uh or fly on i mean it would fly on by playing it in reverse and everything would fly onto the screen and make up whatever your title would be which was pretty neat way back then and i really had some really crude titles way back in the 50s but we've all uh kind of advanced from that now and went through uh eight track tapes and cassettes and eight millimeter and then we went to VHS and Beta and Super VHS and Digital and now High Def and they just gonna keep going. They've got working on the next one after High Def now. So I guess it will never end. They'll, uh, even when they get a picture that is perfect, like looking at your hand, they'll still wanna do something to it and make us pay to get a little bit of upgrade. But I've got, th I need a new computer now, but I've got three and they all work fine and I just hate to throw one of them away to put a new one in but I would like to have another one. Uh, I already have high definition software that I can uh, edit high definition but until we get a uh, Blu-ray recorder uh, we're not going to get anything that's uh, true high definition and be able to edit it. The only thing we can do now is use the HDMI wire out of our camera to a uh, high def uh high def tv and then we get true high def from our camera but it's not edited and uh well i know jim's first uh, high def camera boy you couldn't do nothing with it you couldn't pan you couldn't do no kind of editing now you can i guess with these uh ones that's on uh dvds i don't have one but if you had one with dvds i know our dvd recorders do this so I don't see why you couldn't cut out a piece. The newest DVD recorder I got has a, a feature where you can cut out a piece of video, like if you shot the ground accidentally or something, and then it'll put it back together and it's seamless when you play it back. So you can do all that in the hard drive on the uh, newest uh, DVD recorders. And uh, <clears throat> also men uh, mentioned to Jim here the other day that uh, they quit making uh, recorders now with hard drives. You can't get them anymore. Uh, I have three, and I think Jim has three. And I just bought one about a month ago. And I was going to get another one, but when I tried to get it, when well, I found out they don't make them anymore, uh, I called uh, B&H, and uh, they said the only thing they have is a foreign brand. It uh, works overseas. It don't work here. And you have to buy an expensive converter if you wanted to use it here. And so I guess uh, there wasn't enough, uh, I guess they didn't sell them in enough to, you know, really keep making them. So that's why they probably quit. But boy, I think they're the trick with a hole in it, I think. I like, really like them. You can uh, edit with them inside the uh, recorder and take out pieces and stuff like that and then join them back together. And uh, you can do pretty good editing just with the uh, DVD recorder itself. And uh, I have uh, two Phillips and one Pioneer. And I think Jim got on the internet and uh, got him another uh, Pioneer. He needed another one. And they are, they are nice, but they don't make them anymore. The th good thing about the Pioneer, the video uh, firewire is in and out. You can send the uh, signal out to your computer or anywhere you want to. So I, when I play a DVD in my uh, Pioneer, I can send it right to the hard drive on my computer and edit it and make another DVD. So that's the good part about it. And uh, then they quit doing that. Now you just have uh, the firewire in, it's not out. So that's the way my other two are. And uh, so I, I really take care of this one. I don't wanna, I just use it mostly for playing DVDs out to my computer. And uh, I don't use it much for making DVDs because uh, I don't want to be wearing it out since you can't buy any more of them. Now, and uh, with my newest uh, one that I just have, uh, it's a, a combination. It's a VHS and a hard drive and a DVD recorder. And it's a six-way copy. You can copy from tape to DVD, from DVD to tape, from DVD to hard drive, from hard drive to tape, or from hard drive to DVD. Six ways you can go with that. 
and it's a $300 machine which uh, I got from uh, Heartland America they still uh, they sell things that's been sent back it didn't work and then they fix them and they're factory new and guaranteed sell them for high price I got it for $149.95 so and I was gonna go get me another one but uh, they sold out of them and then when I call uh, B&H they don't make them anymore that's why so that's the end of the hard drives I guess so we'll have to find another way to get around this stuff maybe a new computer I don't know why Jim didn't step on up to that 3000 or 3300 or something like that one that has uh, all the high def stuff that Sony has that's the one I'd like to have but I really don't have enough uh, high def stuff to step into that yet I've got four or five tapes of high def uh, footage but you'd need more than that to you know step up to three thousand dollars for something that you could uh, uh, edit and make uh, blu-rays and things like that with well John I guess I covered about everything so till next time I'll talk to you on the round robin well Greg I just got done watching your segment you weren't sure what it was that Terry had. He had both knees fixed. It took about a year, a little better for him to get them both fixed and uh, go through rehab. And uh, then he called me and wanted to get him an airplane. And you was uh, commenting on uh, me being a master builder. Uh, my friend Gene, I don't, I'm not sure if you met him. He's another Gene in our club. Uh, his name is Gene Hines, and he's 85 years old. Got a beard, kind of look like uh, uh, Kentucky Fried Gen uh, Chicken's General, and uh, he's really a master builder. He really can't fly. He's wrecked probably 50 planes in the last five or six years. But uh, I, now he's getting so old. He's 85. I have to hold him and keep him steady while he flies and. He give up on landing and taking off, and he lets me take them off, and then he flies them, and he lets me land them. So, but he's not—he's unstable. He can't turn around hardly, and might fall down. So, he fell down once last year, and he threw his radio and hollered for me to go get it, and I run and grabbed it up and saved his airplane. Luckily, it, normally that wouldn't happen. You just got a few seconds there, and I have to look down and get the radio, and then look back up and find his airplane. And uh, after he'd done that a time or two, he'd give up on taking off and landing. But he's 85 and he won't give up, but he's a master builder. He can build a, a fantastic airplane scale. He built one, there's one down here at Lockin Airport. He went in there, looked at it, and uh, uh, talked to the man in there. And that guy took out the plans for the big one. and. Uh, scaled him down a set of them and he built that thing and it looks just like the one hanging up and then he built a uh, antic which is an old airplane from way back there shortly after the 1900 well shortly after the Wright Brothers models is one with a cross uh, beam stick rear end which is hollow and uh, he built that and it was just like the real thing and he put the little caps on the corners of them uh, uh, bars where he put them together and put uh, rivets in it and he just done a fantastic job on it. You're talking about sports that you don't care about sports. I don't care anything about sports. I used to play baseball and football and stuff when I was young and I enjoyed that because we was uh, do that on Sunday out in the cow, cow pasture but as far as uh, professional sports it's a business for them and I really don't care nothing about it and uh, Sid uh, we're talking about uh, all you guys was congratulating Sid on his uh, 58th wedding anniversary and mine is my 58th wedding anniversary was December 30th and uh, I guess Sid's is real close to that and uh, I got to find out when he was married because we were married right about the same time and I'll have to get him to tell us the date on that. And I don't know if uh, you and uh, Jim probably heard this on the news, this guy that uh, shot a cop up here above me. 
that was a really a sad story. And then my friend just brought me his newspaper over where it had the, that guy's picture all about him. And uh, he was just a truck driver, a real nice guy, never had been in trouble of any kind. Got laid off here a month or so ago and uh, was drinking up there at uh, one of them uh, fast food places. And uh, they called his wife to come get him because he was a little rowdy, I guess. And uh, before she got there, the police already arrested him for DUI. And uh, but she got him out, got him, brought him home. And somehow he got out and left and went back up to the police station, sat out there in his uh, truck and waited till the policeman come out and give him the ticket. And he shot him. But the policeman had on a bulletproof vest, so he just shot him in the back and the shoulder. And it didn't go through the vest, naturally, but he yelled over his radio for help, and uh, he returned fire, and one of the other policemen come out of the uh, building there and uh, returned fire, and they killed this guy. And, it's a, and his wife said that really wasn't him. He was just depressed over losing his job, and the reason that he went back up there to shoot that policeman, and he thought he was uh, going to leave, lose his uh, CDL uh, license, so he wouldn't be able to drive anymore when he did get another job. And uh, that's just a sad story. And w again, we're still praying for your daughter and praying that she don't go completely deaf. And I believe you said now that she's uh, just about completely deaf in one ear, her left ear. Right ear, I believe it was, but she can still hear out of the other one, and then it also affects her eyes. And we're praying that uh, she never goes completely deaf. That would be really hard, but going blind would be much harder. But people that are blind are so sensitive to everything. Uh, I've heard some of them say that they wouldn't get their eyesight back if they had a chance, which I can't understand that, but. I guess they do. Well, I guess it's about time for us to get together and go back and eat again. We hadn't saw each other in a couple of months, I guess. And uh, I was over at uh, your side of town. So I guess when the weather breaks and uh, it ain't too bad, why well, you and Jim can come over and we'll go out again and see if we can get a hold of Bob. And I hadn't talked to her in about, I guess, a month. And he's holding his own about the same. So I guess till next time, I'll see you over here for dinner probably. And after that, maybe the round robin.